it came to shock selection had a couple different options out there got a small budget left two inch on it decided to try these out these have uh, a coil over for hauling extra weight in the back an extra 1200 pounds I was hoping that this would help out because I've wheeled my Jeep so much hundred thousand miles that the back end is sagging so I'm hoping this will restore some of the strength of the factory springs so we shall see how they work now these are factory length so I'm gonna have to uh, increase my the mounting point for my uh, shocks at some point by two inches so it'll get back into the center where it should be basically right in here it should be right in the center instead where mine is right now it's more two inches off so it's kind of in this territory so if you're actually looking at the shock it should be right in the center when I mount them they're going to be up here which really is going to limit my articulation for droop and it's just going to be out of the design specs for the shock so that's another project for another day but that's why I chose these and they did not offer a longer shock that I could find maybe they do now I just didn't see them I'm gonna use a size 15 millimeter wrench here on the bottom pretty simple Pull it out, you see it's going to extend all the way down. If you've got an older vehicle, you'll want to look at this. Make sure this isn't pitted. This is natural, but if this is pitted and rusted out. Go get a new bolt. And this nut on the back side is actually welded on, so you don't have to put a wrench on that. Your top nut, it's actually really easy to get to. Or bolt, excuse me. It's right here on the top in the fender well. This one. Is also a 15 millimeter. Wondering if I'm gonna have to trim this little plastic piece. We'll find out here shortly. Let's check our clearance. Right before we put these in. We're at 35 and 5 eighths. That will show. Let's see what it is after. Now most shocks, you can just push up on it and get it in here. I have a feeling I'm going to have to jack this up and push it in and struggle with it. So, let's see. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, since it was going to take so much willpower, try and squeeze it in there. An easy way to make it fit is to simply jack up your vehicle. So, of course, always be safe when you're jacking up your vehicle. You don't want it to fall on you. But I've got plenty of space now. Like I said, I've got a two inch lift, so I had to use my factory jack. I'm not in my garage, so I'm just using what I got. And look, now it just goes straight in. So, take this little Booker right here. Start screwing it in. You just want it 
mini snug. If you torque it down to all hell, you're going to crimp this and you're going to screw up basically the whole purpose of having this bushing in here. So, just nice and tight. Now because I have a lift on here and I'm using my factory jack, I had to grab the lowest point of the body. Don't grab it on the axle because you're just going to defeat the whole purpose. Grab it on the body so the axle stays on the ground and you're creating distance between the axle and the body. So I grabbed this upper control arm mount right here, excuse me, lower control mount that mounts onto the unibody. And that's at the point that I use for jacking. So did we gain any ground clearance? We are now at 36 and a quarter. So yeah, three quarters of an inch. I like it. My butt of my Jeep does not sag anymore. Remounting something besides what was originally designed for your vehicle, you want to check a couple things. As you can see, I am actually rubbing on this little splash guard. So I'm going to have to trim that. That's an easy fix. That's just plastic. But look for those things. So that way you don't have rattles and hums and all that stuff. I have wheel spacers, so my tires actually stick out further than they do factory. So that's another thing you want to look at, clearance to the tire. But overall seems to fit really well up on the top and all the way down to the bottom. I just trim that and we'll be good to go. I have one side done right now. Need to do the other side. So let's do that and see how it rides. There you go. Here's a factory shock compared to these new ones, the coilovers. You can see the kind of size difference, but they're about equal length. You can also see mud from four wheeling. This is just plastic splash guard. This is all metal. Has a nice rubber isolator in the middle. Hopefully they ride well. They don't stiffen it up too much. Jackpot. Some thoughts on how it drives. Handles a lot better. It's definitely more firm in the rear. The rear shocks were just completely done. They're the factory shocks. I have 100,000 miles. But, while it's going to limit my articulation off-road, on-road handling is way improved. Of course, I would handle <laughs> just about any shock. But I definitely give them a thumbs up. I like them. And if you're having a sagging rear end, I would definitely suggest them. Or if you're in the market for shock, if you have low miles, if you only have like 45,000 miles and you're going to get new shocks, I would just get factory or standard. I wouldn't get the coilover ones, but if you're going to haul extra weight a lot, like I do when I go camping or anything else, I would definitely, definitely suggest them. Anyways, that's my review. I hope you like it. If you got any questions, leave them below. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe.